We're proving credibility and integrity to the right people with Wordsmith, coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning, we're at the Elizabeth Maddox Chapin Building on the Grand Strand campus of Ori Georgetown Technical College. We're visiting with Mary Eady, the president of the Wordsmith, Inc., a public relations firm here in Myrtle Beach. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Greg. Thanks so much for being with Great us this morning. Great to be with you and with everybody in the PD and coastal area. Absolutely. It's a, such an exciting time to think about sitting here. You know, just last month they had the uh, grand opening celebration here at the uh, new Elizabeth Maddox Chapin building, the, the foundation building for Ori Georgetown Texas College. So much going on and so much going on on the Strand. It is a beautiful campus. It really is. And couldn't think of anyone better to get in today than uh, having the opportunity to sit down with you relax a little bit and hear about so, so many things going on, not only with the wordsmith, but also with you and your travels all over the state and all over the country. Thank you. Exciting time. Mary, can we talk real quick about yourself? Are you originally from the area? I grew up in Hemingway, which mm -hmm. is certainly in this viewing area, and my family's been there since 1732. Exactly. Uh, in, in the Johnsonville and King Street area. And so it's a privilege for me to be back home because I consider Myrtle Beach to be almost home uh, compared with where I've been before. Did your family have an association with the Strand uh, growing up in Hemingway? Did, did you all travel to this area? We did. This was our vacation spot when I was growing up. In fact, my grandfather built one of the first houses in Surfside Beach. And so he grew up coming here and, and I grew up coming here and I always wanted to live here. And people said, well, what would you do? I said, well, I could always fish or I could, uh, you know, collect seashells, and I said, well, we don't know about that. So I said, well, maybe an, an opportunity will open up, and surely enough, um, the opportunity opened up at Coastal Carolina University in 1984, and I could not wait to come home. And I'm so thrilled I did, because this is the most dynamic area of South Carolina in the PD and coastal areas, I think. Oh, yeah. Mary, wasn't there a story? What, uh, was it your grandmother or relative who had... Uh who had given you a piece of property on the Strand, is that right? Yes, my grandmother bought some property for $5,000 in Myrtle Beach in the 1960s. And she thought she was crazy. She said, oh, my word, she said, this will never be anything but just a pile of sand. But then she, when I was five years old, she brought me down here and she said, this is your pile of sand and one day you will build a beach house on it. Be careful, Greg, what you tell children because they will take it to heart. I did, and when I was 32 years old, I came to Myrtle Beach and built a beach house. 27 years later. Amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing, Mary. And, and, and to think about all that's happened over that time, where did you attend school, Mary? Well, I went to Queens College in Charlotte, North Carolina. At that mm -hmm. time, Queens was an all-female Presbyterian liberal arts college, and now, of course, uh, Queens accepts men as well. Hmm. And then I went to the University of South Carolina and uh, finished my bachelor's degree there because I changed majors from Russian studies and foreign languages to journalism. And then uh, majored in broadcast journalism as an undergraduate and stayed for graduate school while I did some work there in journalism in Columbia. That's amazing. You said Russian studies? Russian studies. <laughs> I guess. thought I wanted to become an interpreter at the United Nations. Yeah. So I, I studied the language and the literature, and I'm so enamored of Soviet and Russian literature. It's beautiful, it's deep, and it's powerful. And it's very similar, really, to American literature in terms of the themes and in terms of the characters and the images. And it's very, very uh, exciting, I think, for Americans to learn about foreign literature. So I really loved that. And also had a, a, a minor in French. Huh. because I enjoyed that so much. But it, it, it's great to, um, to start a career in one area and wind up in an entirely different area. Yeah. We need to keep reinventing ourselves as we live and have great experiences. And you're doing just that, Mary, absolutely. When did you first realize you had a flair for writing? I have always loved to write. I, I wrote my first poem and published my first poem before I could write. I had to dictate the poem to my father when I was five. <laughs> And he was such a great sport about it. Uh, after a hard day at work, he sat down and 
and transcribed the poem that I dictated to him, and then we submitted it to a literary publication, and it was accepted. You know, children are not subject to being censored. Whatever they think is what they say. Yeah. And so uh, children are really natural writers, so we need to encourage our children to think and to write and to express themselves because they express themselves so much better than we can do it for them. Mm, mm. Mary, those are great words. As I sit here and ponder that, children can express their words so well, so much better than we can. That, that, that's a very good point. As we, as we think about being there in Columbia, finishing up school, and then finishing graduate school there, what was your first job out of school? My first job when I finished my master's degree at USC was working as a reporter and layout design person for the state newspaper in Columbia, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I had previously worked between graduate and undergraduate school mm -hmm. on Capitol Hill for Senator Strom Thurmond. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows Senator Strom Thurmond okay. and practically everyone in the state of South Carolina has worked for Senator Thurmond at one time or another. Mm -hmm. uh, he just had such a legacy in the United States Senate, and it was my privilege to work for him for a period of time between graduate and undergraduate school. Absolutely. So coming out of graduate school, that, that first position was really getting out into the workforce there at the state, at the state newspaper. And that was a wonderful place to begin, mm -hmm. in our capital city, to get to know the other members of the Capitol Press Corps. Mm -hmm. And I was very fortunate to learn the craft from so many editors who were very attentive and helpful and who helped me grow in journalism. And you grew in your profession from journalism into broadcasting and then later into public relations. How about, can you share with the viewers a little bit about that transgression? Well, a, a wise professor told me once, if I ever aspired to a career in public relations, that I needed to begin in a newsroom oh. because reporters can sense when a public relations person knows what he or she is talking about and when they're just second guessing. Mm -hmm. And that made a lot of sense to me. And they also said, if you stay in public relations long enough and you become successful enough, you probably won't want to be in a newsroom because there won't be enough money there to keep you. Mm. I thought that was kind of interesting, although money mm -hmm. shouldn't be the reason that we choose our careers at all. Mm -hmm. But it was so much fun to work in a newsroom. It was a very open kind of environment, and I felt privileged to have that opportunity. And I really learned so much about the business of journalism in addition to the actual writing of the pieces that we produced. Absolutely. And that was a great, uh, great message from that uh, at, at an early, or early stage to be able to recognize you'd have to get that experience in, in broadcasting prior to going into public relations. That's wonderful. Where were you working prior to coming back to the Strand? I was working in Columbia as public relations director for the South Carolina uh, Technical Education System and Industrial Training Program at the State Tech Board in Columbia. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed that. I learned so much about economic development and job creation. We worked very closely with the, it was, at that time, it was the old South Carolina Development Board, now the Department of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And we worked very closely with them and the, the Employment Security Commission. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, tried to create jobs in South Carolina and to create an awareness for students to have careers mm -hmm. at these various uh, industries in South Carolina. It was a wonderful experience. Mary, you said back in 84, as a part of uh, Coastal Carolina, helped bring you to the Strand. A very dear friend of mine from college, Rod Gregg, was doing public relations at Coastal Carolina at that time. Mm -hmm. And Rod is a magnificent Civil War scholar, as we all know, mm -hmm. and a brilliant writer in his own right, and Rod was at Coastal doing public relations, and I had left him a note when I was down here on vacation. The note said, Dear Rod, what a wonderful job. If you ever leave it, call me. Yeah. And he did. He said, cool. I'm leaving to pursue my writing. Mm -hmm. Are you interested? And I said, absolutely. And within the week, I had interviewed for the job, and they'd interviewed others, of course, but they offered it to me, and I came right down. Couldn't wait to be here. Golly, Mary. But you know, the most interesting part of moving down here, and only, only in Myrtle Beach could you really say this, is I lived on Stanley Drive in a house that I rented from a friend, a high school friend. And at high tide, I couldn't get out of the driveway. Oh, no. So I'd have to call Coastal and say, hey, guys, 
I'll see you in a couple of hours as soon as the tide gets down low enough for me to be able to drive the car over to the college. No. And only there would they really have understood. Yeah, you know? would they have let, if, let if you. If you called somebody at Francis Mary, and I'm not sure that they would have right. said, well, okay, <clears throat> that's fine. But at Coastal, they did, simply because those were the conditions that is, here at that time. That is amazing. And those, those conditions have obviously changed pretty dramatically in the last 20 years. So much growth. Yes, yes, Mary. And growth is exactly what you did when you left Coastal, I guess, and went directly into, did you set up the wordsmith from Coastal? Incorporated the wordsmith in 1989 and oh. left officially in early 90 to um, open the doors. And that was quite an experience. I'd mm. always wanted to have my own PR firm at Myrtle Beach and felt very fortunate that over a weekend I talked with four prospective clients and they all said, yes, we will do business with you. Mm. And so I, I left and, and opened the business. And uh, you know, it's it's wonderful experience, but you wish you had known so much more when you when you initially did that. Yeah. But it's a wonderful growing experience, and I have loved every minute of it. And I will say this about the entrepreneurial spirit in Myrtle Beach. It is remarkable, and inspiring, and just unbelievable to to have that level of support in the business community. I think there's so many entrepreneurs in Myrtle Beach, people who started their own uh, retail businesses or hotels or restaurants, and they understand what it's like to open a business, to begin from scratch, and they all came to me, so many of them came to me, and said, good luck, and let us know what we can do to be supportive. Mm -hmm. And that feeling of camaraderie that is really it permeates the, the Grand Strand and the PD region of our state, no question, and really makes you feel at home and opens the door to many possibilities. Mm -hmm. Marion, you called on some of those people. I did. And what was so amazing to me is they would say, now tell me what a public relations firm does, because right. in the yeah. early 80s, we had a number of ad agencies here, sure. some very fine advertising agencies yeah. in Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. And some mm -hmm. of them were practicing a little public relations along with that, mm -hmm. but no one was using the prescribed Public Relations Society of America formula and the, uh, the code for doing that. Mm -hmm. And I was the first accredited public relations practitioner on the Grand Strand. So that it made me feel a little like a pioneer. Absolutely, Mary, and that probably prompted some other folks to uh, to get that accreditation or no. Are you still the only accredited one? Uh, I think there's one other right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How exciting, though, to be able to take that to to take that first leap of faith to leave Coastal to incorporate the wordsmith, and then to think about going up. And did you ever? I mean, was there enough planning that you could have done to go ahead and jump out on your own? I think the leap of faith. Uh, requires planning but you really can't plan no. for the unexpected you just have to go ahead on that faith and uh, Laura Smith with Smith Shanafeld accountants was very helpful to me and pointed out some things I needed to know early on right. and of course the first time she talked with me about what it would take in terms of energy and money I <laughs> you know I just wanted to cross a little ball and say who would really want to do this but uh, it turned out to be a great experience with the help of people such as Laura and uh, some good bankers and some people who gave me great advice along the way. Yeah. So I feel very fortunate to have uh, come to the Grand Strand at a time of growth, great growth, and uh, as the Grand Strand is coming into its own in terms of sophistication, so much has changed since then. Everybody in town knows what public relations is now. Uh, you don't have to explain that to anybody. Well, we will not ask you that. I, would, I, I mean, for, there are certain viewers, uh, let, let's assume uh, you're talking to somebody who doesn't know the benefit that a uh, client could receive from a public relations firm, Mary. Let's say someone in the PD or the Strand who may not be familiar with exactly what a public relations firm does. W what would you all do for a client? Public relations companies are good at helping a company or an individual interpret change, positive change or negative change. Uh, if you're a company that's growing or seeking to grow, seeking to establish a niche in the market, seeking to become known as the number one in your field, mm -hmm. then that's when a public relations firm can take a look at mm -hmm. the competition, can help you uh, determine what your position is, can do some national and, some, and in some cases international research um, from the files of the Public Relations Society of America and other international groups to help you take a look at where your company is and what you should be doing in terms of your 
visibility, in terms of uh, reaching into new markets, and in other areas to help you establish yourself more firmly so that you can make more money. Yeah, and representing niches is probably a very important thing. It really is, more and more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mary, you, you would represent real small clients as well as real large? Our clients run the gamut at Wordsmith. We really feel fortunate. We work with community groups, as we did on the Carolina-based Parkway. Mm -hmm. We work in the uh, forest products and timber industry. Mm -hmm. We represent tourism groups, and that means you know, small restaurants or big uh, developers. We also work with uh, the PGA and the LPGA over time with various golf tournaments. Mm -hmm. And we've represented a variety of, of industries, including the pharmaceutical industry. And we work with individuals, such as attorneys, physicians, accountants, who are trying to raise their profile in the market. You've also done some work with politicians. And, and ha your work in the political arena, has that enabled, helped you in the public, as a public relations representative? It has. Mm -hmm. And working with various elected and appointed officials has taught us about various programs that can be helpful to companies and individuals as they expand their markets. And we have also in, just enjoyed getting to know these individuals. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how that would differ from servicing a uh, another uh, company? I mean, servicing the political arena and, and some of the uh, public organizations juxtaposing and serving a for-profit company. Well, companies have pretty much control of their own destiny. They can make decisions very rapidly, mm -hmm. and government agencies need to consult various committees and go through various channels to make things happen. So sometimes there's a delay there. Uh, also, public officials are responsive to voters, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. businesses are responsible and responsive to customers or clients or stockholders or suppliers. Right. So it's a little right. different there. Yes, definitely. Mary, there's so much more to you than your role as president of the Wordsmith, Inc. Can we spend a little more time uh, reviewing uh, much of what's going on within your life, particularly on your writing side? Can we take a break? I'd love to talk with you about that. Spectacular. We're visiting with Mary Eady. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. <laughs> Welcome back to Carolina People. We're visiting with Mary Eady. Mary, how has our local business community changed over the years which you've been here? We have so many more uh, varied businesses now, and they're very sophisticated about marketing. They know what they want. They know what people they need to recruit uh, to serve the clients and customers they have, and they're just very much more in the know. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're coming from many other parts of the country where they've had a very broad marketing experience and so our services need to be more sophisticated now than ever before. Mm -hmm. Mary, aside from your service as president of the Wordsmith Inc., there's a heck of a lot of char uh, groups, charities, and otherwise that you're very active with locally. What are some of those groups you're real active with? Well, we've worked a, a number of areas including the uh, First Presbyterian Church here in Myrtle Beach mm -hmm. and also with the uh, Coastal Writers Group. Uh, we also do other kinds of volunteer work with various task forces and subcommittees such as the Carolina Bays Parkway Task Force and we work with them for a while in a paid capacity and for a while in a, in a volunteer capacity. Mm -hmm. Mary, you said the word we and that made me think there's a little more to Mary Edie when we think, are, do you have family here in the area, Mary? I have a number of cousins here in the area. My mother is now in Columbia mm -hmm. uh, but of course I'm married. My husband's here, an engineer for the city of Myrtle Beach and so he's He's up on all the infrastructure changes and all the sophistication, and we really have so much more now going on with road construction and water and sewer work and public transportation than we had in the 1980s. Yeah. So we feel very fortunate. Absolutely, Mary. I would have had difficulty without uh, having some way to mention Mike and, and, and the great relationship you all have. You're also a member of several literary groups, Mary. How have you been able to expand uh, uh, views throughout the wordsmith through your experiences with the different writing conferences and groups? Well, writing in any capacity helps you if you are a public relations practitioner because about 80 percent of what you do in the course of a day involves writing. Mm. And I've been fortunate enough to know a number of published authors. 
uh, including Gwen Hunter, who is widely known as a very successful uh, writer of medical thrillers, mm. and she is the president of the Southeastern chapter of the Mystery Writers of America, and she got me to become involved in the Mystery Writers of America group, so I'm involved there. And also, I had the privilege of getting to know this past year, Sandra Brown, mm. who's a best-selling author and whose latest book, The Crush, was a bestseller. She's written 65 bestsellers on the New York Times list. 65? It's amazing. And a number of international, of those are international bestsellers, too. Golly, Mary. As a writer, you have a preference for fiction or, or nonfiction? I just love both. I love the written word. Mm -hmm. The written word inspires me, and it teaches me, and it, and it evokes feelings from me, and it helps make me a better person, the written word. Mm -hmm. And so I really, I really enjoy both. I was a journalist for many years before I mm -hmm. pursued uh, outlets in fiction, for example. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I've just completed the manuscript for a political thriller, which is now with a literary agent in New York, and he's trying to sell it, and I hope he can, because I think that would be a, a whole new avenue and a whole new world for me as a writer. Wow, Mary, is that, that's a private title? Is that something that, have you titled it yet, or is that... Uh... Well, I do have a working title, but we know that the publishing houses change the title to right. suit what they want to say, mm -hmm. and so the editor of the book will will come up probably with a new title. Very rarely do they use an author's title right, on a published right. novel. Mary, having been a journalist, what do you think sparked your interest in fictional literature? Actually, I think Gwen Hunter had a lot to do with that. At a writer's conference here in Myrtle Beach, every October, the South Carolina Writers' Workshop, and I'm on that board, has a big conference at Ocean Creek. And it's usually the middle to the end of October. And anybody in the audience who's interested in writing may want to consider coming to that conference at Ocean Creek in October. Mm -hmm. The South Carolina Writers' Workshop website can tell you all about it. But I sat in a seminar uh, that Gwen Hunter conducted two hours one afternoon mm -hmm. uh, about writing fiction. Mm -hmm. And she so inspired me that I just went out and started writing a novel. And so I tell everybody that Gwen taught me how to write novels. And she laughs whenever I tell people that. And that really enabled you to explore a potential talent and a real talent now. That's correct. And the only reason I was in her workshop was that I was supposed to be meeting with a New York editor who, whose flight was delayed and he wasn't here in time uh, to do some other work, and so I just happened to wander into her workshop. Mary, you said a political thriller. For viewers who may, I mean, what, what does that mean? This is a fiction. It's fiction, right. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And it is a mystery, and uh -huh. in the course of the book you have a kidnapping and you have a murder and you have other kinds of things going on, but it's based in Myrtle Beach, and it's about two different power groups trying to take over the future of Myrtle Beach. Wow. Is there any uh, inspiration or reality for, for some type of, of piece like this? Well, I think there's always a seed of something that happened, and you remember it and use it in your fiction, but you really have to uh, weave and wind it and, and change it significantly for it to be the kind of story that will sell. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. needs to be more complex, and so you take the seed and you just move it on and on, and then create the characters to go around it. Mm. Mary, how does that feel to be able to step out on your own now and actually put pen to paper, and not just in uh, the, the poetry that a, that a father would transcribe at an early age, but to, to, to make that effort and step out there on your own? Well, you feel as if you are having a great party and you're introducing all the people in the world to various characters that you've helped create. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a big gala, a, a, a nighttime gala, and you, that, that's the world that you envision yourself in, and then the characters come to life as they tell you what they want to say. Mm -hmm. And that happens on a subconscious level. When you imagine a character, and you're working at the computer, and lo and behold, the character starts telling you what the story is, and you write it. Wow, Mary. Are there any other new projects on the horizon? Anything you can talk about? Obviously, just waiting for that literary agent and him shuffling that around uh, a political thriller. Are, are, are there some other projects on the horizon? Well, there's some great, great opportunities here in Myrtle Beach and in this region of our state. And one thing that we've, we've become involved with uh, lately is trying to help some environmental uh, causes do some good work. Uh, at Coastal Carolina University, Dr. Susan Liebes is working on uh, a project to save the Waccamaw River, and she's mm. talking with various uh, businesses and individuals about comp uh, compiling a, a group of very influential people, bringing them together to help save the Waccamaw River. 
And that's going to be something that we're going to enjoy volunteering with. And we hope other people will see the value in helping save our natural resources as much as we possibly can in an area that's also growing. Balancing the development with the environmental side is important for our future and our quality of life here. Mm. Mary, we've got a little less than a minute, and there are so many more questions I want to ask you. But I was thinking, if, if there was anything, if you had one thing you could change in your life, I know that's a, a irregular question, but if there was anything you could change in your life, could you think of it? I think the one thing that it's important to do early is to take great risk, because only with great risk do you get great reward. So when you can achieve your goals early and build that confidence to become your best self, that's what it takes. You heard it. Viewer, she's talking to you. Take great risk. Take it now. Obviously, you haven't risked anything by sitting here with us this morning and enjoying Mary eating. It's been a treat. Mary, thanks so much Thank for being you, with Greg. us this morning. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. We want to thank Mary Eady for making today's Carolina people so special.